Next aspect of the uh, yogic tradition is about recognizing all shades of emotions. So, many of you must have heard about 9 or 10 rasas. Shrangar is related to love and attractiveness, Hasyam is related to laughter, comedy, mirth, Rodram is related to fury, uh, Karunyam is expressed through compassion, mercy. Bibhatsam is reflected in disgust and aversion, uh, Bhayanak is also recognized as rasa, as juice of life, as essence of life, as essence through which we experience life and uh, that is related to horror and terror. Uh, Viram is related to the heroic mood, uh, Adbhut is related to wonder and sense of amazement, uh, Shantam is peace and tranquility and of late uh, uh, one more rasa was included with the title vatsalya that is parental love, affection towards the uh, deity or towards the world uh, that is that was more popularized in the uh, medieval period when bhakti the devotion movement was uh, uh, at its upsurge. So, if you look at these list of emotion these are rasas no rasa is considered to be more or less important. They are accepted as the expression and experience of life. So, all rasas can be directed towards creative expression. So, you will see in the Mohani Attam or Bharatnatyam, you will see all the rasas being explained. In the sculpture, uh, we see in the in so many temples, all the rasas are explained, they all rasas are accepted. So, there is a tendency in the yogic tradition and the Indian tradition to embrace all form of emotions and uh, accepting the possibility of elevating the human mind and human soul to the next level, to the higher level of evolution through all the rasas. And if we try to understand the emotional intelligence from the perspective of yogic tradition or Indian tradition, keeping these rasas in mind, we can very simply say that our ability to experience all rasas and ability of coming back quickly to the shantaras is the definition of emotional intelligence. So, shantaras is like uh, zero gear. So, you, uh, you drive vehicle at higher gears, one first, second, third, fourth gear and eventually it has come to halt and you halt it and bring that to the zero gear. So, that is also uh, that analogy can be used to understand emotional intelligence from the perspective of rasa, from the perspective of yogic tradition. That is why somewhere in Bhagavad Gita, it is said that samatvam yoga uchyati, balance is yoga. And this is the tagline of the Yogastha Club of IIT Bombay. We briefly talked about Yogastha Club in the previous session, uh, which organizes the uh, yoga sessions, yoga practice sessions and yoga knowledge sessions very regularly in the institute. Uh, so, that also has this yoga, uh, uh, Samatvam Yoga Uchyate as the, uh, as the punch line, as their tagline and that is reflection of the one definition of yoga which is equanimity and balance. Uh, yoga sutra very clearly articulate the positive behaviors as well. In the Bhagavad Gita, we see more elaboration of these positive behavior and positive properties of human being. So, in the yoga sutra, uh, positive behaviors are identified. Uh, in the in the in the particularly two sutras which are related to yamas and niyamas yama are ahinsa satya aste brahmachari aparigraha these are called yama let us look at the etymology of the word yama yama word reflects reen the the instrument with which uh, a charioteer controls the horses 
or the rope which is used to control the horses by the charioteer. It is related to restrainer. Yama is also the also another name of an entity which is responsible to maintain law and order, maintain dharma in the behavior of the different organisms and definitely behavior of the human beings. So, dharma raj is the one who is responsible to maintain and ensuring the rightful dharmic human behavior that is called uh, uh, dharma raj and that is another name of uh, yama. Yama is also meaning universal order. So, the, it is a reflection of the custodian of the universal order. So, these are not related to uh, any context, these are to be maintained, these are to be followed in the all situation because this is, these are the basis on which the nature operates. If we, uh, if we deviate from these, nature will have its course correction. So, what are those yamas? These are satya being truthful, ahinsa that is non-violence or not hurting, astair that is not stealing that which is not mine, not acquiring or not getting or not picking up from the others. So, yama are satya that is truthfulness being righteous, uh, ahinsa that is non-violence, this also includes not hurting, aste non-stealing, not taking away that which does not belong to me, aparigra, not hoarding, even if I can afford, I should not accumulate that which is not required by me, that is not needed for me and brahmacharya. Brahmacharya meaning restrain on the senses and that behavior that leads to ultimate realization of Brahma. Yoga Sutra also talk about Niyama. Niyama are the modes through which Yama can be realized. So, these are the committed engagements. You have to make extra effort to follow the Niyama and Niyamas are required for us to behave according to Yamas. What are the Niyamas? Niyamas are first is Shauch, though we have to follow Yama, we have to follow Satya, Ahinsa, Astera, Pagya, Brahmacharya, but human tendencies take over, we all know that. So, first Niyam is Shauch, cleanliness, extrinsic cleanliness as well as intrinsic cleanliness. That is first Niyama, because that is the basis on which we can ensure that we follow Yamas. Santosh. Santosh is sense of contentment. That which I have, I need to have sense how much I need to possess, how much I need to have, so that it is good for me and it does not deprive others to have it. So, we can look at Santosh. Santosh is very much required to practice Aste and Aparigra. If I do not have Aste, if, if I do not uh, follow the name of Santosh, I cannot follow the Aste and Aparigra. Third is Tapas, self-discipline. Why Tapas is important and how it is connected to Yama? We say Satya. What are the limits of Satya? Satya can be limited to how much I, what I speak. Satya may be related to my behavior. Satya may be reflected in my thinking. Satya may be reflected in my understanding. I might be speaking Satya, but my understanding of Satya might be primordial, might be primitive, that might require evolution. Similarly, Aparigraha, how much I can consider important, how much I consider useful for me individually. So, there can be different levels of Aparigraha, how much I can give in the donations, how much can be given for dhanam and how much I should keep my, for myself, my own uses, that degree can also vary. So, we need to keep developing the capacity to not be dependent on external possessions and that practice requires regularity. 
that practice, the higher level of aparigraha, higher level of ahinsa, higher level of aste are not possible without consciously taking up hardships, without consciously controlling our mind, without consciously regulating our desires and that is called tapas, that is self-discipline. Swadhyaya, I may consider that something is satya, something is ahinsa, something is aste and I am following it, but my understanding might be incorrect. My understanding requires to get sharpened every day, because every day brings different context, every day brings different situation. So, we need to consciously and continuously keep reflecting on our behavior, on our thoughts, on our words. So, how can we do that reflection? For the self reflection, we need to read, we need to study the text, we need to study the Shastra, Yoga Sutra or Bhagavad Gita, the these the Prasthantrai, these are considered the most important shastras for swadhyay, self reflection and self study. That self study is required because without self study there cannot be self reflection. Without self reflection I may cook up my own theories about satya, ahinsa, aste, I may not take feedback and I may not pick up the right action which is relevant, which is according to dharma in a particular moment. So, Swadhyaya is important. Swadhyaya has three stages, Adhyan, Manan, Nididhyasan. Adhyan meaning studying, Manan means thinking about it, internalizing and Nididhyasan is revision and implementation in the real life. So, revision consciously, cognitively and also revising when I have to choose my action. So, Swadhyaya has all three aspects and uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra also says Ishwar Pranidhan. It is surrender to the higher power, higher order, surrender to the universal law, universal principles. Ishwar can be understood in different ways according to the, uh, the path of the sadhana and surrender to that higher power can also help us to follow the yamas which are Satya, Ahinsa, Asteya, Parigraha, Brahmachari. Similar things are expressed in the Manu Smriti as well, which says that Akrodha Satya Vachanam Samvibhaga Chama Tatha Prajanaha Sveshu Dareshu Sochama Droha Evacha. Free from anger, sharing wealth with others, forgiveness, procreation of children from only one's wife alone, following purity, absence of enmity, straightforwardness, maintaining people dependent on oneself are the set of nine rules. So, this is described in the Manu Smriti. Uh, the picture you see is the reflection of uh, Patanjali, the, the sage who is attributed uh, this uh, great work of documenting the, uh, 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 the yogas in the form of the formulaic uh, composition Yoga Sutra and his head is reflected uh, with the heads of the snakes. Snake in our tradition is considered to be most receptive uh, organism. So, Patanjali is considered to have the receptivity equivalent to uh, 100 uh, snakes. That is why his head is reflected in the form of the Sheshnag or, uh, or the snake which has 100 hoods. <coughs> 